In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how you can set up Home Assistant with the supervisor on a Synology NAS. Now the Home Assistant supervisor just allows you to do things a little easier than you would traditionally do inside of Home Assistant itself. That's not to say that you can't do things in the core version of Home Assistant. However, supervisor is just going to make it a lot easier and you'll probably have a better experience overall. So the thing about installing it on a Synology NAS is that you have to install it inside a virtual machine manager. So I have a video on how you can set up Home Assistant inside of Docker and I'll leave a pop-up for that now. But if you wanna set up the supervised version, you have to do it through virtual machine manager. So that's what we're gonna look at today. So before we get started, I just wanna mention that I have full written instructions in the description of the video. So the first thing that you have to do is make sure that you have Virtual Machine Manager set up and configured. Now, not all NAS devices support Virtual Machine Manager. In the written instructions, I have the exact devices that will, but just go through and make sure you have Virtual Machine Manager installed and configured. And then we're gonna head over to the Home Assistant website and we're gonna download the latest version of the VMware ESXi Home Assistant Virtual Machine. Now we're doing it this way because Synology's Virtual Machine Manager allows you to import OVA files. And an OVA file is the same format that ESXi uses. So that's the reason why we're gonna be downloading that version in specific. So after you have it downloaded, you can open up Virtual Machine Manager, select Virtual Machine, then Create, and then you're gonna to have to click the Import button. At the next screen, you're gonna to have to select Import from OVA Files, and then you're gonna to have to select Next. And you can then select the upload a file from PC option and you can browse to the OVA file that we just downloaded. After that, you're gonna to have to go through and select the storage for your virtual machine manager. Now this is uh, gonna be set up with the initial virtual machine manager setup process. So we're not gonna be looking at that here, but you'll have your storage here. So you can select that and then you can select next. The next screen is just gonna ask you to configure the general specifications, which honestly, everything here can be left as default. If you wanna change the CPU or the memory, you can do that, but if your machine has enough memory and CPU cores for this, you could just leave everything as default. The next section will ask you about the storage. You can leave that as default as well. And then finally, moving on to the next section, you're gonna have your default virtual machine network. However, you do want to select the gear icon and you want to ensure that the model is set to E1000. If it is, you can select OK and then you can select Next to proceed. Finally, there's a few settings that we have to change here. So you're going to change Auto Start to Yes, Firmware to UEFI, and then the Virtual USB Controller. You can set that as USB 3.0, but this is really only if you're going to be passing USB devices from your NAS to Home Assistant. If you're not, you can leave it as disabled. However, if you want that functionality, you can set it as USB 3.0. Finally, at the next screen, you're gonna to have to set the users that you'd like to be able to manage this virtual machine. These are just the users that are gonna be able to turn it on, off, and basically change all of the configuration for it. And then after that, you can select next, power on the virtual machine after creation, and select done to create the virtual machine. Now at this point, the virtual machine is going to import. It's gonna take some time. I would say that you have to give it at least five to 10 minutes to fully import and start up. But when it does, you're gonna have an IP address assigned to it. You're actually gonna have multiple. The first IP address is the one that you're gonna to use to connect to Home Assistant. So like I said a little earlier, you do have to give it a little while. So if you initially try to access this and you can't access it, give it some more time if it still doesn't work, you can click the connect button inside a virtual machine manager and that's just gonna bring you to the console of it. So that's gonna allow you to see if anything is wrong. If you do have an error or something there, it's a good idea to just go back to virtual machine manager, shut it down, start it back up and then monitor it through the console again and then hopefully everything will work as expected. But assuming that you can get to the IP address and port 8123, you're gonna be able to navigate to Home Assistant. Now when you first navigate to it, it's gonna be in a preparing state. This preparing state can take anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes so be patient, but once it's done preparing, you're gonna be able to go through and you're gonna be able to create your user account for Home Assistant and then at the next screen, you can change your location, time zone, and the unit system you would like to use. 
And finally, you can change if you want to share anonymous information or not. And when you select next, Home Assistant is automatically going to find the devices on your local network. So you can go through here and you can kind of check these out or you can just select finish and then you're going to be at the main Home Assistant page. At this point, Home Assistant is set up. It's a supervised version, so you'll be able to use any of the add-on packages or really anything that you want to use. And then you can go through and add on any of your integrations or really anything that you want to connect to. So that's kind of the long and short of it. Unfortunately, like I said, you can't install the supervised version of Home Assistant inside of Docker. And that's the reason why you have to do it this way. But I'm hoping that this video helped you guys out. If it did, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments of the video. And if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks, guys.